So, I've decided that since my 2012 Mac Mini that I run my Plex server off as being a bit on the slow side and I believe that the hard drive that's actually in it may be damaged. I've went and bought myself a drive doubler kit with some tools and an SSD to upgrade it. Let's see how well this goes. So as you can see here, I've actually got the tools from a small kit. The various screwdrivers that are required. A couple of tweezers. And a splinting tool, I believe that's called. And these are the motherboard removal tools. Some grommets and the actual cable itself. However, just in case I require it, I have my trusty iFixit toolkit sitting by my side. Just to try and protect this a little, I'm going to sit on top of a rather large mouse mat. So the first thing we have to do is make sure the camera can see what I'm doing. It's focused correct. Just put your thumbs in here and try and turn them round. There we go. And now we can flip the lac over and the box should come out easily. Wow. For a sealed unit, look how dusty that Mac is. What do we think? That looking a bit healthier? Let's try and get the right tools for moving on to the next step. So the first thing we have to do is to take out the RAM. And to do that, we just pull these clips at the side of it. And it will pop up. Just wriggle that out a little. There we go. Just place that in the side just now and then do the same for the bottom clip. So it's a really small torque, so I'm presuming it's going to be this one. So we have to take these three screws out here so we can take the fan off. It's not that one. Well, there we go. The kit that I've been provided does not work for this particular Mac Mini. So we shall move them out of here just now. And I shall return to my trusty iFixit toolkit. I believe these are T3 screws. It's my T3 driver. Let me see if I can get a better angle on that. Okay, so we take our T3 driver and that doesn't appear to be a T3. This is why I don't do upgrade videos very often. Let's try a T6. Okay, it's a T6. So T6 and fan. T6 and fan. And T6 and fan. So now they're on screws. I can lift this off gently. And that one's not quite loosened. Lift that up. And as you can see, there's a little part of the cable is connected in here, which I want to put in. And just lift straight up. Put that over the side. Now we want to use a T6. That's not a T6. I really, really have got all these wrong. I think this is a T8. So just take this one out. Oh. 
Clean this one up. And this one up. Okay. So that's our T8. I think we need to take some stuff out now. So all I need to do now is I need to lift this strip gently up, if I can. It's in there quite tight. And shift it to the side. Look at the dust under there. And under here, we can see where the airport connects to. And I need to try and maybe you can see that on camera. Just over here. See if you can focus on it. So we need to lift that up. Now there's a little screw in here that I'm hoping is a T6. Appears to be so we have to take this out and then we should be able to slide this cowling right out. Okay, as you can see, this is our current hard drive. This one will be staying in here, but we're going to put one in underneath. So now what I need to do is I need to remove this T6 screw from here. Just see me putting my screwdriver into, which is in the logic board. So that's a long T6. And then I need to take my spudger and pull up on the SATA cable. We should really have checked that I had the right SATA cable first because these come in two flavours. Let's double check that. So I've lifted the SATA cable up as you can see and you can see my hard drive moves a little bit. So now I've got those disconnected, I'm going to take my motherboard removal tool, leave it slides into these two holes, and then I'm going to pull back on it a little bit. It doesn't appear to be moving. Let me spin this around and we'll try pushing up the way. There we go. Let's, let's move forward a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to disconnect this cable here, which is for my IR sensor. If I can get into it. No, I can still need to go a little back a little bit further. And this is the point where this is getting very, very difficult because there really isn't much room. To actually get in to remove that cable. There we go. Okay. So that's that removed. 
So the next thing I need to do, that, that's disconnected, is to try and pull this further out. Oops, without breaking it, Davy. much room to do much on this computer which is making this a lot more difficult. There we go. Oops. So I'm not being as gentle with this as I was hoping. But here's your power cable here. Can you just see that getting cap? So I want to try and remove that. And it's not as easy as it looks. In fact, I'm wondering how the heck you actually managed to remove that. Well, if this could come out any further, maybe. I wonder if there's an easier way to do that, let me think. I think I'm just going to go for broke here and try and pull it. as graceful as I'd like honestly especially considering the cost of this thing and the fact that I can't replace it so we can now take this all the way out and now I can lift my hard drive up and take my hard drive out So as you can see, if this would focus correctly, it keeps changing focus, I think it's because I'm going to frame. That our Mac Mini is nearly empty. So now I have to remove this T6 that's here. This T6 that is here, which is connecting the hard drive mounting bay and the power supply. Under here we have a retaining clip for the power supply. We have to take that and we have to pull that to the side. And then we have to twist this 180 degrees. So now we've done that, I should be able to move the power supply out itself. supply is now removed and I can now lift up the hard drive bracket and take it out. So now we have our hard drive bracket. I'll move the main mini to the side for now. And we'll set this down. Now we need to install our old hard drive and our new hard drive in here. So what I need to do is I need to take these four grommets that came with my doubler kit and I need to install them in here somehow. Yep, you just press them in. This is actually very flimsy so being caref be careful doing this. I uh, 
I don't rate my Apple products anyway, but I especially don't rate little pieces like this which feel like they're designed to break under pressure. Because obviously Apple wants you to buy these things with two drives in it, not fit them yourself later on. That's why they've soldered the new ones in. So now we take our new hard drive and we take our new cable and we connect these two together. Go. And we fold the cable down. And then IR sensors over there. So that goes in the mini like that. So this one goes underneath. But you have to feed the cable up over the top. Like so. There we go, that's our new hard drive currently installed in the bracket. So now we've got this installed in the bracket. We're supposed to put four screws in here, but for some obscure reason, I've only been given nibs for two of them. I don't quite know why they look hollowed out. So I'm actually just going to use two of them on opposite sides. These are supposed to be Torx 8s. So I'm just screwing these in here. So that bit of sweet entry yet. Maybe see this a bit better. It's actually really difficult to do something like this when you're a one person band, it really, really is. I find it a bit ironic it's taking me longer to get these screws in than I did to strip the system to this point. Okay, so I'd say that was probably secure enough. So what we need to do then, is we need to move this out of the way. And then we need to bring our Mac back in. Once this is back in, we need to try and slide this back into place. Of course, trying to put it in upside down is never going to help. So back in this way. And hopefully if I line up the screws here, everything is actually just going to work. Everything's just going to be perfectly aligned. And of course, that's not the case, so there's some alignment I need to do up the back here. I'll just move this down here and see if I can get a better view myself. This is when they could have been done with a clear Mac Mini case. A clear Mac Mini case would make this so much easier. I think the problem might be my screw. Yeah, the problem was the screw. That's why they've got the little headless ones in there. So they've not made the screws to the same specification. Therefore, they've unfortunately not left enough room to actually install it correctly. So now I need to put 
back in our power supply. And now I need to find my retaining clip. Slide that back in. That's the retaining clip back in. So I believe these two screws, if I remember correctly, go back in. There we go. Okay, so the next step that we need to do then is we need to slide the main board back in. Hopefully this isn't going to be as difficult as getting it out was. But this is an Apple product we're talking about, so I'm betting it probably will be over-engineered. Well, maybe not. The big problem here is knowing exactly how much pressure you can put in any particular part of it. So once I've moved this in, just double check you can see that. Yep. I want to reconnect our power supply. So let's spin that round just now. Our power supply ribbon cable goes in here, but it's quite pernickety to actually get in. You might need to use a spudger. Let's try spinning that around. Typical Apple function doesn't even line up correctly. When I mean, you're talking to a company that can't even engineer a phone that's got a headphone socket in it because they want thinner and lighter. Well, nobody really wants a thinner and lighter phone. They want better battery life and better screen resolution and faster processors so I should now be able to slide this in a little bit further something stopping it and I don't quite know what what's stopping it The thing is, I can't even feel where there's resistance for me to turn around and say, oh yeah, that's what's stopping it. Like, I'm suspecting it's my power cable that's came out. not sound good. Right. So, interestingly, look at that, the power cable, or rather the cable for the hard drive doesn't quite fit the way it's supposed to, because you're supposed to bend it down here and then on there. That's a little bit awkward. Can you see that? I'm trying to focus a little bit better on that. Okay, so, now that that's back in, I believe my next step will be put the motherboard screw back in, which will be that one there, I think. I need to just have a think about that and then reconnect all these cables. Hopefully, we'll be all good. Now, now that I've slid that pretty much all the way back in, I should be able to put this back in, too, which was actually nice and easy. That's the IR cable. So let me 
have a think about what screws next. I'm pretty sure it is this one here, but we shall find out. Okay, so when I think about it, common sense tells me I should probably connect the other hard drive first. And obviously the hard drive that I have just installed, so let me just dust this off a little because it's absolutely manky. Now there's two little stubs, as you can see, on the far side. I need to make sure they fit into two holes on the opposite side. So both these power cables, or SATA cables rather, and these are very difficult to line up in themselves in that they're absolutely tiny and there's very little margin for error. I'm going to need more light, as per usual. So we now have both our hard drives installed in our Mac Mini. Now we need to start putting the rest of it back together. Okay, now I'm going to set the cowling back in. rather unceremonious to be honest. I believe this is an screw going. Testing my memory now. Next would be to place the airport back in. So that obviously went in this way. I have to reconnect the airport connection first. It's quite difficult to show you this in camera. I really need a rig for an overhead thing. But uh, at this point in time, that's not really in my budget. Apologies of his because of a frame again. This is very, very tiny workings that you're trying to you're trying to work with here, or very tiny things you're trying to work with here. It doesn't help that apples put a flap over the part where you actually have to. You have to put the cable. I can see me speeding a large chunk of this part up in post. If I ever get the darn thing installed. Apple uses such low, small size connectors, it's unreal. The problem is I don't want to put too much pressure on it in case I actually break it. And of course I don't want any of this metal to touch the motherboard. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, it really has to be. Oh, finally we got it on.
Ah, let's see where I'm going wrong here. There's a lip, so you've got to get the lip underneath. And then, there we go. So, we now have our hair port reconnected and installed. Okay, that wasn't perfect. Um, these still aren't perfect. I think there's just... I actually think that this has popped up a bit higher because both my SATA cables have popped out. Um, so I've got these in just enough just now. I'm going to put the main cable back in, uh, the main screw back in for the motherboard and attach the fan and put my RAM back in and then we'll see where we go from there. Hopefully this is going to work, otherwise I've just made a £1,500 whoopsie. So now I'm going to put the fan back in. So I have to first attach the fan controller. It's obviously, as everything it is with Apple, absolutely tiny. There we go, that wasn't actually as difficult as some of the things I've done today. And I need to line the fan up correctly with where it needs to go. Okay, I think these are T-sexes. Now that my fan's back in, I need to put the RAM back in. So this is the same process as I did to take it out. I slide the RAM in an angle, hopefully the correct way, which I do believe is that way. I'll line it up with the slot. Push it down and then press down and it should clip in. And the same with the next stick. Line it up with the slot. Push it down and then push it down. So, let's see if this disaster is actually going to boot. If you like this video give it a like, if you dislike this video give it a dislike too. If you get feedback on this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future then please let us know in the comments below and most of all thank you for watching.